Today marks a new chapter in the history of humanity's forgotten families. Never before has a world leader recognized the suffering of Huntington's patients and their carers. The disease is described as the harshest affliction known to mankind. It is also the most misunderstood until today, the most hidden. Our windows were shattered here in our NBC viewer. I'm happy to report that no NBC personnel were injured in this attack. Christine? My name is Charles Sabine, and I have Huntington's disease. In the course of 26 years as a television journalist living through more than a dozen wars, five revolutions and four earthquakes, I witnessed many examples of people achieving the seemingly impossible. None, though, was inspirational as the tale I'm about to tell. The most profoundly difficult and hardest aspects of the disease are common to all of us across the world, whatever our physical conditions. Because it doesn't matter how much money you have with this disease, you still suffer the same symptoms and horrible death, uh, and you still pass the disease on to your children in the same way. For generations, Huntington's has been undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. Doctors and scientists have struggled to find an effective treatment, let alone cure, for the devastating fatal genetic disorder. But in 1993, they were able to identify the defective gene when they found a concentration of families with the disease in a fishing village in Venezuela. We are in Barranquitas. It's a town at the shore of the Lake of Maracaibo. As a, a great prevalence, maybe the most um, around the world uh, of Huntington disease. Nobody cares about it. They have less than one meal in a day. This community has historic significance for Huntington's researchers. 25 years ago, blood samples taken from the Barranquita families enabled scientists to first discover the gene that causes the disease. Those tests were crucial in mapping the whole human genome. Despite this contribution to medical science, conditions for people living here have become even harder since. And your husband here? Like most people with late-stage Huntington's, Argenis has lost the power of speech. Todos los días para mí es fuerte porque hay algunas veces él está tranquilo, otras veces se me altera, otras veces no lo puedo bañar, otras veces sí, otras veces tengo que pararme de madrugada, pero todas son fuertes. Their son, 13-year-old Anyerbi, has a 50-50 chance of carrying the defective gene. Porque le dicen muchas cosas dentro de la comunidad y en escuela. Lo retiré por mí misma, por el bullying. Es mi parte más difícil. Pero lo voy a volver a inscribir para que vuelva otra vez ahí, porque él quiere seguir estudiando. Two hundred and fifty miles away in northern Colombia. 79-year-old Delia has already lost her husband and five children to Huntington's. Too poor to afford graves for all of them, she had to bury three together. She now gives 24-hour care to four more adult children, all of whom have the disease. Me toca bañarlo, cocinarle, darle la comida. Todo eso hay que hacérselos a ellos porque ellos no pueden ya mover las manos ni siquiera para comer. 
Son mis hijos y yo me siento como si yo fuera la que tuviera la enfermedad. In a suburb of Argentina's capital, Buenos Aires, lives 15-year-old Brenda. She has juvenile Huntington's, which progresses much faster than the adult version. Most sufferers get little support from either state or society. Brenda is one of the lucky ones. She is cared for by medical geneticist Dr. Claudia Perendones. On her last birthday, Brenda lost her father, Daniel, to the disease. She now lives with her aunt. Brenda's mother, unable to cope with looking after her father, abandoned her daughter. Few others offered to help. Hay mamás que piensan que la enfermedad es contagiosa y, y no dejan que se juntaran con ella. Es mía. No la tuve, pero es de mi corazón. Es toda mía. Sí. So many Huntington sufferers are treated as outsiders, almost like lepers by the communities in which they live. Few organizations exist to help them in Latin America. The Factor H Foundation was set up by Nacho Munoz San Juan to try and alleviate the poverty and stigma experienced by so many. He's passionate about improving their quality of life. I, I, I see it as a, as a civil rights issue. Um, of course, in Latin America and in poor communities, the issues are much more magnified. In order for civil rights issues to be sorted out at a social level, the communities that are affected the most need to have their own voice and they need to be empowered. Another person who's devoted her life to Huntington's patients is one of Italy's best-known scientists, made senator for life for her work on the disease, Elena Catania. <coughs> Together, we hatched a plan to approach the one person who could help sufferers in Latin America and around the world. Having covered the Vatican as a TV reporter, I knew that directly engaging the Pope would be an enormous challenge. The Vatican is still so steeped in tradition and secrecy that every letter has to be hand-delivered. For seven months, we appealed for the Pope to meet just one family from Latin America to represent the suffering of many. And the request was uh, for a private uh, hearing, for a private meeting with one Venezuelan patient, one. From one, we are going to have this event with hundreds, hundreds of people that will meet together on May 18 from all over the world, 25 countries, because it was like an avalanche. We sent out the invitations so that they would arrive on Epiphany. That feast day is celebrated by Catholics in Latin America with the giving of presents. But this envelope contained a gift beyond their wildest dreams.
Oh, bastante ese ahí es mío. No va a llegar el día de conocer al Papa, hacer la maleta. Y... A ver, André Feli me dice. These villagers who live at the end of the world in some of the worst conditions imaginable had never left their hometowns, let alone their country. They'd never traveled on a train or an aeroplane. They didn't have birth certificates, let alone passports. This would be the trip of a lifetime. The event is called Hidden No More, and there really are two uh, applications of the problem of hidden. One is that the families around the world who have suffered from this disease hide it away because they suffer great shame and, and stigma uh, from the disease. There is another application of the word, though, which is that the disease has been hidden away from the rest of humanity for all sorts of historical reasons. And this event once is, is targeting both of those problems. Here she is, here she is. Yeah, yeah. No se llama Francisco, estaba esperando. The day our guests arrived was memorable in more ways than we or they could have imagined. I got like one bunch of the patients into an elevator. <laughs> I went up with them and got out of the elevator and they were gone. The elevator came back and they weren't in it. <laughs> At that point, I thought, oh my God, you, you know, you stupid fool, what on earth are you thinking of? You know, of course, you've now you've gone and lost 14 Huntington's patients who've never been in an elevator in the airport, in Rome airport, you know. That was the moment when I thought, okay, maybe we've bitten off more than we can chew. Living with the stigma of the disease, these families don't get much respect where they're from. People can think it's a curse, contagious, or even a punishment from God. So it was a new experience for our families to feel important, chosen even, ambassadors, because that's what they were. I'm very happy to be able to invite you in this room of the Senate many people who, unfortunately, have una questa malattia, questa malattia di Huntington. Ecco il perché di questa vostra presenza, ecco il perché noi cerchiamo di fare in modo che appunto non siano più nascosti coloro che hanno questa malattia. Grazie Presidente Grasso, grazie davvero per eh, aver consentito che questo incontro si potesse tenere in quest'Aula. Questo è il simbolo, è un'Aula ovviamente simbolo della democrazia parlamentare. Approfittando della solennità dell'Aula che mi emoziona come il primo giorno, vorrei 
poter dire e promettere che da qui tutti noi possiamo fare davvero molto, essere un moltiplicatore di speranza, perché nel mondo il prima possibile lo stigma della malattia nascosta non sia altro che un lontano e brutto ricordo. Grazie. Ciao e grazie davvero di essere venuto, Alberto, veramente. It is something I've never seen before in the Senate. So it also tells you that there are uh, miracles, <laughs> okay, that uh, good goals mm, can foster. My hope is that this will be a life-changing event, but then you realize that it has already changed our life, certainly my life. I met uh, Dilia from El Difficile, I met Maria, I met Agnerbi and, uh, you know, Brenda. So now these are people that uh, are uh, now taking part in our world. Because they are here, they are in Rome, they are welcome here. It's just great fun, I mean, to see all of them. So happy. It is uh, just wonderful that uh, they could be served. Central to the Hidden No More event is the presentation by a 15-year-old girl, Brenda, who has the disease, to Pope Francis of a pledge which states that any family who has Huntington's disease in their blood should not feel shame or stigma about the existence of that disease in their family and that the disease should be hidden no more. It's a kind of daunting space. It's, a, it's quite an effective design. That doesn't look from here like 7,000 seats. Oh, is this Axel? I think it might be. Hello again. My job was to make the event special for our guests in as many ways as possible. Brenda's idol is a Grammy Award-winning Argentinian pop star called Axel. Uh, yes, to Rome, yeah, but no here. Unknown to the teenager, I'd contacted his agents asking if he was prepared to give Brenda a surprise. People with HD have good days and bad days. The evening before the event, we had a reminder of what a risk we'd taken in making a 15-year-old with Huntingdon such a crucial part of our plans. We'd just got a message that Brenda was unwell. Those close to her doubted she could make the event at all. Where are we today? We are now at uh, 8.30, the doors are open. Um, people are now arriving. We are 50 minutes away from uh, when we're going to start speaking. 50 minutes away from the biggest event in the history of Huntington's disease. Um, so, nothing can go wrong, right? Seventeen hundred scientists, patients, carers, doctors, friends and families gathered from 25 countries. 
Among them was the woman who led the team which discovered the gene in Venezuela and some of the world's leading Huntington specialists. It's unusual for me to be lost for words. I've struggled to describe the significance of today and how honored I am to be here. Um, it's a huge occasion for the HD community and for people with rare and genetic diseases throughout the world. Welcome, everyone. We'd better start now, otherwise we'll be uh, running out of time. I'm going to show you now a short film to show you just a little bit about some of the families who are mostly along this front row here and their lives in South America. People who you saw in that video are now here in Rome, in the front row, and stand up, please, if you can. There is um, a little boy who you saw in that film earlier called Agnebi. He's a 13-year-old boy. Oh, I think I can see him. Now, I should explain a little bit about Agnebi. He was uh, telling me how his very favorite thing, like most teenage South American boys, is football. His mother, though, explained that unfortunately, she had to take him out of school because the other kids were bullying him because he comes from a Huntington's family. So he's had no one to play football with. And I said, oh, so do you play on your own? And he said, well, no, because I don't have a football. So, Anyebi, we have got you a football and to come up and give you this is Juan Pablo Jepez, who uh, has already met you because he is from Maracaibo. He is an uh, actor, the heart throb from uh, Hollyoaks. <laughs> and, oh, I just remembered there's something else. What else? Oh, is, oh. Oh, and who's number 11? Who is number 11 with Barcelona? It is Neymar. What, can you tell us what it says on that shirt? This is with lots of love for you. Signed from Neymar to Anyerbi, his own Barcelona number 11 shirt. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> and, oh yes, I think there's something. Oh, let's look over there. Oi, Ian, Ian, tudo bem? Estou te mandando uma camisa. É para você. E espero que você goste. Obrigado pelo carinho, tá? Fica com Deus e um abraço. Tchau, tchau. Yeah, I think I think Ian is. Uh... <laughs> 
You take that, and we'll get a copy of the video so you can watch it again later and show it to your friends, and maybe they'll play football with you now, huh? Fine, you go with, go with the Juan Pablo. OK. Now, another young person, Brenda. Thank God the one person on whom we were relying had made it. Brenda had recovered enough to be there. She is here with her doctor, Claudia Parandones. Now, Brenda, uh, I remember when I saw you last month that you said that your favorite thing in the world was a singer. Can you remember? Can you, Claudia, translate? Axel. Axel, okay. So, and Axel's a very, very big star, I know, because his last song I saw had a quarter of a billion hits. So he is a very big, 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 big star. And do you like his music? ¿Te gusta la música de Axel? Sí. Yeah. Sí. 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 And does he play the guitar, Axel? No sé si soñaba. No sé si dormía. Y cuando se dio vuelta, vio a Axel tocando la guitarra, entonces me apretó muy fuerte la mano, muy fuerte, y me dijo, ¿esto es real? ¿Esto está pasando? Piensa uh -huh. por lo que quieras, lucha y sé paciente. Lleva poca carga, a nada te aferres. A que le ilumina la cara. Y yo nunca, en estos cinco años que veo a Brenda y que me tocó verla con la muerte del padre, me tocó verla en situaciones médicas muy complicadas, nunca había visto esa expresión en su cara. Nunca vi esa sonrisa en su cara. La, realmente tiene una felicidad. Celebra la vida, celebra la vida. Sua Santità, caro Papa Francesco, l'Huntington è una malattia genetica, neurologica, ereditaria. Così tante persone legate alla malattia, tutte insieme, non si erano mai viste. Ciascuno di loro ha una storia, un nome, una fede e una vita strappata ogni giorno con i denti. Queste persone sono oggi qui in prima fila per incontrare lei, Sua Santità, perché sanno che un suo abbraccio è una rivoluzione per il loro presente e il loro futuro. Your Holiness, on behalf of the families here today and others across the world, thank you, sir, for the wisdom and the compassion which has shone the light of your church on our disease at last, so that it be hidden no more. Every second of the run-up to Brenda's presentation of the pledge to the Pope had been vetted by the Vatican. Axel wasn't part of that plan, but by then, 
Brenda wasn't letting go of his hand. A 15-year-old girl from Buenos Aires called Brenda and accompanied by uh, Axel, the singer from Buenos Aires as well, she is going to present you a scroll describing the goals of this event for the Huntington's community. Finally, Brenda and her new best friend delivered our pledge to the leader of more than a billion Catholics. But we had no idea what he would say to us about our disease. Per troppo tempo le paure e le difficoltà che hanno caratterizzato la vita delle persone affette da Huntington hanno creato intorno a loro fraintendimenti, barriere, vere e proprie emarginazioni. In molti casi gli ammalati e le loro famiglie hanno vissuto il dramma della vergogna, dell'isolamento, dell'abbandono. Oggi però siamo qui perché vogliamo dire a noi stessi e a tutto il mondo «Hide no more», «Occulta nunca más», «Mai più nascosta». Non si tratta semplicemente di uno slogan, bensì di un impegno che ci deve vedere tutti i protagonisti. Mi rivolgo ora alle famiglie. Chi vive la malattia di Huntington sa che nessuno può davvero superare la solitudine e la disperazione se non ha accanto a sé delle persone che con abnegazione e costanza si fanno compagne di viaggio. Thank you again, sir. These are my children, Romano. It was only on the morning after that we realized just how much attention our event had captured. What I had never occurred to me was how many people would watch it around the world. I, I have had messages from every corner of the world. People were watching it in the middle of the night in the United States who, who you know, sent me messages as it was going on. Had it not been for the fact that the Pope said the words hidden no more. And him saying In three that, languages he said that. Yeah. And, in, and that was more, you know, I thought that we had to get, should have, have a picture of him with the pledge because that's the only way we could say that this is what the pledge says hidden no more. But for him to say it,
I wanted, I never said it, of course, apart from at one time when we were with the architect, I said, so, so can people dance in the Vatican? No. It, the question, the answer was no. It, it, yeah, there is no dancing, you know, in the Vatican, an, audi an audience for the Vatican. OK, OK, OK. But I just had this idea that if we could get the band all together to play a real upbeat song as Pope Francis left, and it worked exactly like planned, and I went up on the stage with my children, and then I got Anyebi up, and then everyone else started coming up. The security guys were furious. They were having kittens, because they didn't know what to do, because they'd never seen this before. <laughs> People are not supposed to go on that stage at any time, let alone when the Pope's in the round. And so they were trying to, like, think, well, they, can they throw all these people with Huntington's off? No, you know. I was holding Maria and Maria's hand, who has, has been up and down. She, she's very smart, and she knows what a difficult life she still has ahead, but I have never seen her so happy as when she was dancing on. She was absolutely beaming. For many emotions, it's something that is an experience. And then to see me with all these things here, it's like feeling me in my family. This is my family, because we all are in the same union and in the same battle. Yeah, but we did it. We danced at the Vatican, huh?